There is no reason why you are seeing this ship in a Force 12 hurricane somewhere on the seven seas. But I'm sure someone will copy it eventually and say, Danger on the Yangtze River. Today is Wednesday, the 19th of October, 2022. Now, I wasn't going to do anything about the Free Gorges Dam today, but some things came up which near enough forces me to tell you the latest with that. But I do have what's happening or what happened in Manchester, what happened, what's happening in the National Congress in China and what life is like in China as well. All that and a whole bunch more, so do stick around. First of all, the title of this, it says No Water, No Power. There are some videos circling around social media related to the Free Gorgia Dam that there has no water and no power. But let's go in. Now, I can't do the power for you because, well, it's not available data. But I'm going to show you some pictures. First of all here, this is the Free Gorgia Dam as of the 17th of October. So near enough two days ago. You can see a bit of a difference on the right hand side of the actual dam itself. You can see there is some water flowing out, but on the left hand side, it seems that there isn't. So maybe they're doing repairs and maybe there is no power or very little power being generated. If you compare it to pictures in the past, it would, you could actually see some of the um, generation the water coming out like you can see on the right hand but that may be the reason why there's no power no water well take a look look at it this comes from senatorial hub this comes from a european satellite image service i do believe don't quote me where that comes from so we can go to Chongqing. This again was taken on the 17th of October and you can see there is water there in the city centre. Chongqing is the beginning of the reservoir basically. We can move to this image here which is Yingchang downstream of the dam by about 20 kilometres. There's water there and this is Wuhan. I don't know how many kilometres away to be exact, but there is water there. So there is water at the Free Gorge Dam, and we can have a look at the levels as well. The levels are like this. Kutan is at the beginning, that's Chongqing, that's gone down at 163, and the Free Gorges has gone up at 159, and Yingchang is has gone down at 39.73. We don't normally cover Yingchang too much. But you may be saying, hold on, wait a minute, this comes from the Ministry of Water Resources in China. How can you trust that? Well, I double check it through here, and this is an independent. I don't know where they get the data from, but you can see the levels correspond to the Ministry of Water Resources in China. Now, let's take a break. Whew. Away from the free gorges and what I was going to do mainly for today happened in Manchester in the Consulate General of the People's Republic of China. And it's related to the actual person, the Consulate General, who looks like this. Now, basically what happened was some protesters went outside the consulate on British soil and did a protest. Yeah? And they show pictures like this of Winnie the Pooh. People got mad, or the general consul or whoever, the people in the consulate got mad, and they came out and saying, take it down, but they're in riot gear, wow. So they, the consulate is like Chinese soil, and, the, and outside of that is British soil. And then they actually started to have a little bit of a fighty poos together, trying to drag the person into the Chinese consulate where it's on Chinese soil and British rule is not there. A lot of these people would say diplomatic immunity, but this outraged a lot of people, you could say around the world, about China. It's like one rule for China, one rule for everyone else. This is what happened in the... Um, in Parliament, I think it was yesterday, and let's see what happens 
with this. When ripping down posters and peaceful protest, and soon followed grievous bodily harm against a Hong Konger, one of whom was hospitalised for taking part in a peaceful protest. Some were then dragged onto consulate territory for a further beating by officials who have been recognised to be members of the Chinese Communist Party. We cannot allow the CCP to import their beating of protesters, their silencing of free speech, and their not a failure to allow time and time again protests on British soil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a chilling escalation. We have seen continued persecution of the Uyghur, of Tibetans, of Hong Kongers, and all those who come to our country to seek refuge. What took place on Sunday suggests they cannot seek refuge here and have their voices heard, and our job is to make sure that their voices are not silenced. He says, and I great, I'm grateful to the Minister for confirming that the Ambassador has been summoned, I'm surprised this meeting has not taken place so far. Uh, will he please confirm when it will be taking place and that he will update the House thereafter? Will he also confirm that any Chinese official involved in the beatings will be prosecuted and if they cannot be, will be expelled from this country within the week? And what they are doing to protect protests going forward, because that is a fundamental right and we must uphold it at home if we are to have any chance to uphold it abroad. Yeah. But in all honesty, let's be realistic. What's going to happen? It's just going to be old news and it's just going to disappear, which is a great shame. Now, on my other channel is a little bit of advertising now is something related to a suitcase here's a little sneak peek of tomorrow morning's very early show my time which is about 12 hours ahead of i was going to say china of the united states of america it is a very exciting day today because in two weeks time today i should be flying on my way to the kingdom of thailand my first sort of vacation for just under three years and yesterday i got my suitcase out well beautiful soapy my girlfriend got it out for me because it was stuck way in the back of underneath the stairs here is the suitcase and I am going to open it like for the first time within just under three years and I want you to come and experience the experience that I am going to experience. I can't remember what is in there. Let's hop into it right now. And welcome back. You may notice that I'm doing all the filming today. What's happening with the 20th National Congress in the People's Republic in Beijing? Xi's five-year plan plans down growth, whatever that is. But the next picture is really Xi's general task, making China great again. Couldn't you think of anything original to do? Could, why did you copy... Trump making America great again, making China great again. But here is the actual plan. Xi's five-year plan, common prosperity and standardizing mechanism of wealth accumulation, quality development and harmony between humanity and nature, positive results from COVID zero. Well, hey, basically that means absolutely nothing. And all these plans were basically what will happen. They will just rechange them slightly. Things go quiet. And then the next National Congress in another five years, they will say, we have completed it. Congratulations. China is great again in his third term of office. This all started back with Mad Mao, Mao Zedong, the father of communist modern China. And there is, believe it or not, a person who dresses up like Mao as an A, no, what's the word? But you know what I mean. But female Chairman Mao impersonator says she's adored by fan, but has put off having sex with her husband. Well, <laughs> I would totally agree with that. And also on more lighthearted side, make sure when you're hungry in China, you grab the food first. Now, continuing with a sort of series that we are doing of what life is like in China for the average citizen, here's a small report from Sky News.
How much it's taken to travel between what used to be two of the most international cities in the world. Beijing right now, nothing short of a digitized fortress. And although things are heightened because of Congress, it does give you a bit of a snapshot of what life is like in China at the moment. So very dominated by zero COVID and its rules. In Beijing itself, this is now part of everyday life. It entirely dictates the ordinary lives of ordinary people. Like Mrs. Guan, who can't visit her hometown for fear of her child missing school. If you travel out of Beijing, you could be home quarantined for seven days, she says. But we only have seven days holiday. There's a sense people are restless if resigned. We need to queue for some time, every three days. And that must sometimes feel a bit frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But tempers are fraying, patience is thin. This recently from Shenzhen province. People under lockdown, cracking, clashing. And it's not just lives held back, but livelihoods too. The consumer economy crippled. And there's record young people out of work. Gigi lost her job earlier this year. She wanted her identity hidden, her voice distorted. Such is the risk here of questioning government. She's not against COVID rules, just painfully aware of the impact. I think there will be a period of suffering. The party congress has proposed goals and there will definitely be some difficult times. The goals that we may have achieved in one to two years or three to four years before may not be achieved at this speed now. Criticising the rules here is seen as akin to criticising the government. For top leaders gathering this week, a victory narrative is needed. Increasingly, they are monitoring public moves as well. And the public are beginning to switch. Actually, increasingly, people are saying, well, maybe zero COVID is much more dangerous than COVID itself. China is almost the only country in the world on this path. Lives, they say, must come first. But there are other costs and beneath the control cracks too. And one more bit of information I would love to share with you. Got this off Twitter maybe three or four days ago and I completely forgot about it. If you fly, if you fly Air China and land in London, you will receive one of these pamphlets. And the pamphlet says, London is generally a safe place to travel. However, precautions are needed when entering areas mainly populated by Indians, Pakistanis and black people. Can they actually say that? Why don't they name the areas? Because in these areas, it's multicultural. And it's like saying there's only African-American people in Harlem. There's also Hispanic, there's also Muslim, there's also uh, Caucasian people. So it is wrong. And females accompanied by another person when traveling. Yeah, that's sort of sensible. London, like New York, is a great place to visit. Granted, there are some dangerous areas like New York. Granted, it's not all danger. But to actually be racist in this form is wrong. That brings us to a close today. I think this is going to be rather a long show. Apologies for that. And many thanks for your time. Like, subscribe, share, please. Help financially if you want to, because all that money goes to Pickle, my baby abandoned cat who's sleeping next door, out uh, next door in the bedroom. And I will see you the next time. Have a jolly day. Ta-ta for now. Bye-bye.